What's going on, everybody? Stocks by the numbers. Welcome back. We have uh, about 45 minutes to go before the close here on Friday, but I wanted to uh, just go down the list because, again, when you guys, I always ask you guys if you want, if there's something you want me to look at, you know, mention it, I'll throw it on the board. And, you know, just a shout out to anyone who may have mentioned something a couple of months ago. If I didn't get to it, my apologies. I may have, again, just glossed over it or, or just completely forgotten about it. So that's why I always say, if you wanted me to look at something and I happen to forget, or I just never get around to it, just throw me a little reminder in the comments or, you know, come in the discord, ask me to take a look at something for you. Recently, uh, the last couple of videos got a decent amount of views. And now everyone is kind of throwing out the symbols that they're looking at asking, Oh, could you take a look at this one? Could you take a look at that one? So just over about the last week or so, I amassed about 15, 20 new symbols on my board here. And I'm just trying to go back. I'm, I'm trying to do oldest to newest. But again, like I said, if, if you threw out something that you wanted me to take a look at, and I happen to just kind of gloss over it, please do me a favor. You know, I don't want you to think your voice isn't heard. So just let me know in the comment section. And, and if I did miss something or I forgot you mentioned it and I said I would look at it again, my apologies, but I'll rethrow it on the board and we can always come back to it. But this company is called Berna Technologies, ticker symbol BYRN listed here on the NASDAQ. Now, this is a company very interesting. This is a company that makes, quote, less than lethal uh, kind of protection products, if you will. And they have uh, some interesting stuff. They have like a CO2 powered pistol, it really looks like. And uh, again, like, you know, technically, like it could be viewed as a firearm, of course, for protection. But again, it's less lethal. So it's more available to the average consumer and even the average governments around the world. And we can see here that recently, a couple of days ago, they got a, a larger order from Argentina. And I actually want to apologize because I remember seeing videos of the new president of Argentina walking around. And I know a lot of people, uh, you know, compared him to Trump, like, oh, he's got like that Trump aura and whatnot. And I should have known because the one thing that we know Trump has kind of been driving home, especially since we've had the... Uh, that the, the rate of thefts and shoplifting increasing here in the States, I know a lot of politicians, including Trump, have been calling for law and order, you know, like this wouldn't happen on my watch, like we have to, you know, the police have to do their job, the judges have to, you know, put these people in jail. So the fact that, you know, this guy out of Argentina is kind of in a similar lane, uh, I actually have to apologize because we probably could have put two and two together and you, you you know what i mean again i i know it's all hindsight but if you told me oh hey i'm buying you know berna because of the president in argentina and i think they're gonna you know step up the law and order and you know something like this would be a perfect buy for for argentina to put in an order obviously again now it's all hindsight and, and it all makes sense but if you brought that to my attention i probably would have agreed with you and probably would have uh, jumped on the video, but again, I'll uh, I'll apologize for that. But as we see, Berna said Monday that the police, Argentina, committed to buying 10,000 of the company's launchers. The order will add to the 5,000 launcher <clears throat> to the 5,000 launchers previously bought by the police force last year, adding that more than 10,000 officers have been trained to use the less lethal launchers. So. If orders, if, if new orders are rising and now we have returning customers upping their orders, then obviously the company is doing something right and we're seeing the demand here for their product. And again, this is very interesting because it's a, it's a less than lethal, you know, they call it a launcher, but you know, less than lethal little pistol. And it, you know, it's interesting because a lot of people get upset when the police or, or these military personnel use quote-unquote extreme force and you know you can't just be out here like spraying people down so you know the fact that using alternatives like this again co2 powered little pistol launcher thing less lethal very very understandable in my opinion with uh what's going on again not only here in the states but we're seeing some turmoil happening overseas as well so understandable in my opinion that the order came in like that again original order 5,000 upped it to 10,000. Okay, this is Zach's article. It says he or Berna 
is benefiting from the record-setting revenue expectations announced in the company's preliminary fiscal first quarter 2024 results. Again, uh, these uh, record quarterly revenues mark 98% year-over-year increase. So this time, Q1 of 2024, the company's posting earnings estimated around April 11th, okay? So you got about a month before this company posts earnings again. And this time last year, the company did about $8 million in revenue, and on March uh, 7th, I believe it was, about a week ago, the company came out and said that they're po you know, posting their pre preliminary results for this earnings coming up, and they're expecting over $16 million for the quarter, and estimates were really between like 11 and 12 million. So that's why the stock had that immediate pump, and everyone is probably still piling in even after this rally, just on anticipation that more growth is coming. Uh, company expect to post a quarterly loss of eight cents per share in the upcoming report, year over year change minus 166 percent. Revenues expected to be 11 and a quarter million, but. But there was some, there was another thing. Shares climb 18%. Yeah, see, this was on March 7th. After the company reported preliminary fiscal Q1 revenue almost doubled to 16.7 million from a year earlier. And here you can see these three analysts were expecting around 11.5 million. On trading view, the estimate I think is like 12.7 million. So obviously, this 16.7 million number is above all of those estimates. And again, that's why the stock popped and people are expecting just continued growth moving forward. Uh, the results will be announced in April. No exact date. Mm. Okay. Yes, more than doubled. Yes, he manufactures a handheld CO2-powered launcher designed to provide a less lethal alternative to a firearm, said the growth in what is typically the slowest period of the year was due largely to a celebrity endorsement program that launched in September. The company speaks about bringing in a couple of celebrities recently and supposedly saying that that is helping to drive the revenue. Let me see if we can find it here for you. Okay, yep, revenue up. Furthermore, revenues increased by 6.5%, or about $1 million, sequentially from the fiscal fourth quarter ended November 30th, 2023, which is typically the company's strongest quarter. So they're saying, coming off the strongest quarter, we saw an increase in revenue by about a million. You understand? So that's why also, I think, in my opinion, this is a pretty, pretty big positive. Because if you're coming off your best quarter, supposedly going into one of your slower quarters, but revenue and sales picked up, and now you're making more revenue than you just made in your old strongest quarter, so now this new quote-unquote weak quarter is now your strong quarter. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why I think there's a lot of positivity surrounding this stock. And, uh, you know, if you guys piled in even recently, you know, 9, 10, 11... We, we could potentially make the argument that, yeah, it ran a lot, so of course it could pull, start to pull back to the 8s, the 7s, the 6s, but again, if you know if we're talking about longer-term growth, obviously chances are on that dip, you would probably try to get some liquidity together and average down and add to the position, so that's why I'm saying, even up here at like the 9s and the 10s, if you guys recently bought into this stock, I, I can completely appreciate why you did, so, you know, don't, don't let anyone try to sway you from from the growth that we're seeing here in the numbers and again that's why i like to look at numbers because it cuts through all the nonsense and it you know are we increasing are we decreasing or even if numbers are down slightly are they still coming in above analyst expectations right so we have to keep an eye on all of these numbers and that's why i personally like to look at numbers but uh largely attributed to this uh, celebrity endorsement program the, the program has significantly boosted direct to consumer sales evidenced by a 115% increase in sales on Berna's website and an 89% increase in sales on Amazon.com. Additionally, dealer sales, Fox Lab sales, international sales, all, all saw substantial growth year over year. 
quote, with Q1 revenues of 16.7 million, we've achieved an all-time record sales quarter, eclipsing the previous record of 16 million, Q4 of 22, which even particularly remarkable given the first quarter was traditionally our slowest, right? Q1 23 sales came in at just 8.4 million, and this was prior to the social media advertising ban that took effect in March of last year. Yep, almost 100% growth year over year from around that 8 million mark. We remain cautiously optimistic. While we do not know whether we will be able to maintain such rapid growth throughout 2024, the effectiveness of the celebrity endorsement strategy that we adopted in Q4 23 is impressive so far, boosting direct-to-consumer sales again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In addition, our efforts to explore new channels, new ways to share the Burner story, educate the public on the benefits of less lethal and the Burner platform are ongoing. And, and again, with, with well, here in the States anyway, I know they're consistently trying to tighten up a lot of these gun laws and whatnot, even though, of course, as soon as you do, technically, not to get political, technically, you are beginning to infringe on the Second Amendment. But this is why a situation like this as well, even people who may say something like, I, I would like to have protection, you know, in my home, you know, for, for God forbid if there was an intruder or something, but, you know, I'm sure a lot of people aren't gung-ho about killing someone potentially, so that's why I can appreciate the fact that even the average consumer is now getting the, the, the word is spreading now and, and the average consumer is now going to the company's website and jumping on Amazon and grabbing one for themselves, them, their families, their loved ones. So, again, if, if you wanted the protection of a firearm without the negative potential outcome of, you know, ending someone, then obviously you can use a less lethal form of protection, which is what Berna offers. That's why I think that I think that, in my opinion, sales will probably continue to climb over the years, in my opinion. Let's just make sure, let's just make sure. B. Riley ups price target, this was, yeah, about a month ago, to 14 from 8. Site's ongoing marketing shift to support sales keeps buy rating. So, mm -hmm. let's just see real quick if we missed anything. Yeah, see, they mentioned like Glenn Beck, Bill O'Reilly, celebrity influencers. Building upon the success of the Sean Hannity partnership. Further enhancing direct-to-consumer marketing program. But yeah, the gr the growth in in visits and sales really is is pretty pretty nice. I cannot lie. Again, daily average web sessions thirty two thousand five hundred increase of one hundred and seventy four percent from the quarter before, and a year over year increase of over twenty one percent from that time back in twenty two. Secured a record six million dollar order. Again, Argentina, right? We read that before. Another 5,000 launchers they want. And that's why I'm saying even these other these other uh, police departments and even potentially the militaries even of, of some of these nations may, you know, the orders may begin to pile in for a situation like this where you, 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 can, you can still get the job done, right? With, without completely upsetting and aggravating everyone else because technically it's non-lethal this is the largest single order for burna launchers in the company's history received the first order from the hawaii sheriff's division see what i mean further strengthening the company's position in the domestic law enforcement market so th so this is why i'm saying a lot of these states as well who try to i'd see i don't want to say hinder gun ownership but you, you you guys understand the the political games that are played sometimes in certain areas here in the states anyway so you know if you're in a in an area where it's very frowned upon or potentially it's illegal to have a, a licensed firearm 
then I can appreciate the fact that there are so many people moving towards, again, this less lethal launcher, whether it's an individual person or in this situation as well, the Hawaii Sheriff's Division placing an order as well. So in my opinion, it's understandable and it makes sense. It added 25% more production workers at its Fort Wayne manufacturing facility, increasing launcher production capacity from 10,000 to 12,500 units per month during a single shift in response to rising demand resulting from the company's celebrity endorsement marketing campaign. And they also introduced the Berna Universal Kit, legal in all 50 states and Canada, see what I mean, for the Berna LE and Berna SD launchers, simplifying online checkout for new customers and cutting in half the number of SKUs that the company must carry in inventory. Gross profit was up a little bit. As you see here, increase in gross margin was primarily due to a higher percentage of the company's sales being derived from the higher margin direct-to-consumer channel. So if they're now increasing their margins, lowering their costs, going direct-to-consumer, advertising and marketing well, and sales and revenue is increasing, and now, right, supposedly the preliminary results were reported, and now technically in one of their slower quarters coming off their strongest quarter, now it's their new strongest quarter that this is why again in my opinion i i see the growth and of course buying in here after a run it could go down first but like we always say sometimes we have to deal with short-term volatility when looking for long-term growth a uh, company holding about 20 and a half million cash on hand compared to 13.7 million about three months earlier mm. Company has no current or long term debt. Company has no current or long term debt. Okay. Well, I saw, yeah, I think it was about 2 million maybe of debt on the company. So maybe they paid it off. Or maybe now, a month from now, when they report earnings, maybe they'll announce that they, again, paid off that debt. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, of, to be honest with you. Yep, net revenue, slight decline, decline in international sales from South Africa, South America, and Asia. Increased Fox Lab sales, increased sales at Amazon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is what I mean, getting the cost in line not only increases the margins and, and the profitability as well, but also it gives the company more wiggle room if they're able to maintain more cash on hand and not have to suffer larger losses than they need to in specific areas. And as you see here, the decrease in operating expenses was largely the, largely the result of the reduction in marketing expenses earlier in the year when Berna was banned from advertising on most social media sites. But yeah, that's enough news. But as we see here again, we'll call it about a 260 million market cap Annual revenue jumped up from 16 million to north of 40, hit 48, pulled back to 42, 64, technically more than what it was in 21, losing about an extra 5 million. However, again, if potentially the worst is over, so to speak, then we could, like I said, potentially keep growing from here. Let's look at some of the numbers real quick. Yeah, see, to close out the year, the company had less than $2 million in debt. $20 million cash. Yeah, see, it was less than $2 million as of last quarter. We're waiting for Q1. Free cash flow went positive $7 million. Quarter before was negative one and a half. Before that, positive one. Before that, negative three and a half. Now sitting at around seven. And again, cash about 20 and a half million. And this is why I feel like a lot of these numbers are going to stay up here coming into Q1 of 24. We can see assets outweighing liabilities. And uh, almost, a, almost a five to one here. 
on the short term and on the long term weighing outweighing uh, liabilities as well yep cash flow check our balance sheet assets have been well they were decreasing increase last quarter liabilities went down from 10 to about 7 back up to 10 Assets minus liabilities yields total equity, which for the most part was decreasing and had a slight rebound last quarter. A couple of bucks in debt. Book value, $2. Well, $1.92. But technically, it has been decreasing quarter over quarter. But again, I'm very curious to see um, if, if a lot of these numbers start to increase after the company post earnings again in about a month estimated date april 11th as you see we threw out our preliminary revenue number here of 16.7 which of course is the highest it has been and is showing nice growth coming out of their best quarter you can see even again q4 the year before the company broke above 16 million then just recently 15.6 <clears throat> million and now almost 17 million Cost of goods, mm -hmm. gross profit up to nine million as of last quarter. Very nice. Operating expenses did jump up though, as you see here, to nine point seven million. Operating income remaining negative was a good jump there, quarter over quarter. Not the best it's been. But again, now, if this is, if, if these types of numbers are now potentially the norm moving forward, where the company is going to consistently keep doing like 14, 15, 17 million a quarter in revenue, then obviously, you know, seeing any negatives back here from where they came from, in my opinion, they'll, you know, they'll be eclipsed probably inside of the next couple of uh, quarters, potentially, potentially. Mm-hmm. Don't have much going on here. Training six and a quarter times book. But of course the stock has been on a run, so looking at our recent numbers here, our return percentages are down. Gross margin, as you see, was about the mid-50s, jumped up to above 60 and then dropped back down to 44, and as of last quarter got back up to almost 58%. Operating margin, as you see, almost went positive and then chunked down bigly negative. A couple of quarters ago, minus 58%. Now, as of last quarter, about four and a third percent, minus four and a third percent. So, a lot of these numbers are beginning to trend in the right direction. The company also coming off a reverse stock split a while back that no one mentioned to me. We'll look at that in a moment. EBITDA was slightly positive, drops back bigly negative, and then almost gets back to flat, a little over minus 1%. Net margin percentage, again, was almost flat, dropped back big negatively, and now as of last quarter, about minus 5.3%. Not the worst we've seen. Inventory turnover has been bouncing around. However, they mentioned that they, you know, keeping less units on hand now. Asset turnover was climbing very nicely and has since been pulling back the last couple of quarters, going from 0.88, now sitting at 0.78. Uh, right now, in my opinion, with where the company is and how they're growing, I, again, I'm just kind of going down the list, but in my opinion, I really wouldn't personally, ha I, I wouldn't, ha these metrics wouldn't be heavily weighted in my opinion. And we can see the debt ratios basically in line. Seemed like the company maybe got a, a touch over $2 million in debt for, for a little while. And, and again, last quarter back down to about $1.9 So the debt, the debt ratios really aren't an issue here. The EPS side has been rough. We can see uh, five misses in the last seven quarters. Revenue side, four misses, three beats. But again, they just beat nicely off this last quarter, and now they're going to beat by several million this quarter. And again, word of mouth, if the marketing campaign maintains the uh, the, 
the traffic and the popularity coming into the website and and to Amazon and then translating to more sales then again even moving forward something like this uh, 13 6 14 6 I I actually have a feeling the company may consistently start posting like 15 16 million a quarter you can see here at the end of 24 estimates jump up to about 18 million for Q4 of 24 so we'll see you know a situation like this you do have to take it quarter by quarter it is still technically a smaller company an up-and-comer a grower so have to give it a little bit of time but over the years again even though you had the dip in revenue from 22 to 23 you're expecting an even greater jump up to the next level here of 59 million for 24 then you can see 69 and 78 and a quarter million so technically if they follow this path i i'm not exactly sure in my opinion if we can bring this to you know a billion dollar market cap i mean of course it could happen uh in my opinion maybe it shouldn't happen but again we feed off of positivity so if they're consistently beating earnings from this point moving forward and upping this guidance you know oh yeah by the way for 24 we're going to do like 63 million that's a huge positive the stock will go up probably in my opinion same thing here right if we turn around like q3 q4 of 24 and the company's forecasting for 25 uh 75 million in revenue as you see that would be above estimates that would be a positive the stock would probably jump on that news so we don't know even if the company is going to grow at around like this eight nine ten million year over year level yet because i feel like they're still kind of in that infancy stage even though they've been doing this for a couple of years now but this is going from first of all reverse stock split boom Right back there, as you see, April 27, 2021, at 1 for 10 reverse stock split. Stock was well above $20 a share, getting as high as 30 and then dropping all the way down to $2 a share because, as we know, uh, really, even if the company beats earnings along the way after a, a reverse stock split, they're probably going to go lower. And you can see the company was posting some hits, some misses, and it really didn't even matter. And even when you had a rally coming out of these earnings, it really only looks like it lasted several weeks and then it began to sell off again. Boom. Big drops there. Misses. A miss. And then another miss. But that's when the, the rebound, the recovery took place. But I just wanted to show you the reverse stock split. And here, my trend line going from the bottom there, October 2nd, 2023, connecting to the bottom of January 11th, 2024, coming across. So now... This stock has been up above the line, retesting and bouncing and staying up off of this line from the lows of early October. So now you draw that across the bottom, and this is now your support trend line, right? It is supporting this price and trying to bounce off of it. So now after the run-up, uh, in my opinion, this could, of course, come back and retest this FIB here, 1052. That would potentially meet up with the 20-day moving average. And again, we did just go on a massive run here from 2 to over 14. So that's why even pulling back, again, I know it might suck to see your stock go down, but uh, it really did go on a run. So a pullback here, even retesting this level, as you see, maybe around 9 and 3 quarters. Uh, but the FIB, I think, around 10 and a half, meeting up around that level with the 20-day, I think, in my opinion, that may be the next stop. But it does seem more positive than negative, in my opinion. Uh, even looking at the revenue, we, we, I mean, you know, it's trading at a higher multiple than some other stocks we looked at, but it's not necessarily unrealistic, right? We technically have a growing company. We have new orders coming in. Again, last year, 42 million. So that would be what? Maybe like six, a little less than 6x yearly revenue but for 24 they're expecting uh what 58 59 million or whatever it was right so now if we look at it now we're trading less than five times that revenue no so and again we're dealing with a growing company that's forecasting bigger things moving forward so i don't know if trading five or even six times yearly revenue would be viewed as drastically overvalued my my main concern was the fact that they had this reverse split and then was down for two and a half years almost and now almost immediately 
you, well, I mean, you know, we still have some room to go to get to that $20 level, but it, it really is rebounding very quickly. And I'm just not sure if it can sustain that type of rally, which is why I'm looking at this support trend line. And I, and I have a feeling that we're going to come down and, and retest this support trend line. And if we happen to break, then in my opinion, you probably come down to there. The next consolidation zone there, maybe low eights, high sevens. And of course, it could potentially come back down to six. That's connecting the highs. But in my opinion, this is the level to watch right here, like the high nines, maybe around $10 a share. Let's see if it comes down and, and touches that fib. And then we have to see, does it bounce off that fib or, or does it break and want to sell off? That That's why I'm saying there's a couple of things to watch here, in my opinion. But this is going from the high, uh, looks like August 26, 21, kind of drawing across, connecting those tops there of those candles coming out over the next week or two and i just extended that line out and you can see it perfectly comes to the tops that were hit on december 21st and 22nd before it rejected off the line bounced off of this support and then tried to retest and you can see it chunked up pause for a moment and then broke out above that resistance line so that is your resistance line technically that the stock is still above and this is your support line that the stock technically is still above so anyone who's making the case if they're bullish and you think oh it's no it's going to go back up to 14 you know it's got that bullish momentum I, I i can understand that argument and that side of it so on the technical side i will say it, it does look pretty strong but i'm i'm personally going to be looking for for that fib and then that support level right there switching over to stock charts quickly i'll let you go we can see on the daily the rsi is now sub 58 and you can see as well once the word got out everyone started buying into the stock right they beat the earnings and then boom preliminary came in the rsi was up above 70 for quite some time and then dipped down here mid bollinger band and then a Again, preliminary revenue coming in above expectation. So we pop back up above 70. And now since then, we've kind of been pulling back. And you can see now, technically, it looks like we're right at that line. What are we? 1181 at the mid. We're at 1177. So have less than 10 minutes, about 10 minutes to go. And we're technically below the mid Bollinger Band, which is why I'm saying we could potentially keep pulling back. Bottom Bollinger Band on the daily, 1093. That FIB level, 1052. So we do have a couple of levels to watch here. Again, we could potentially make the argument that the stock just ran up, topped out, MACD was flying, recently crossed to the downside, right? So now we might have to pause for a little while and the stock may potentially slightly pull back and, and then even flatten out maybe going into next quarter's earnings. So we, we have to see, obviously, we still have about four weeks in change before earnings coming out and here on the weekly as well, uh, we, we do have a potential bull argument because we can say that we got above this 200-day moving average and it tried multiple times here over the last couple of weeks to come back and retest and break down below that moving average and it consistently kept bouncing and staying above it. So even now at 1178, 200-day moving average 1148, so technically it's above that moving average and could still make the argument that it's bullish, but again only time will tell rsi is is up pretty high the rsi is up pretty high and has been above 70 for about six weeks now so that's why i'm saying a little pullback again i know it might upset you if you got in recently if you thought it was only going to go higher i understand how you feel but even looking at this run here, you can see there really is only a handful of red candles here throughout basically a six-month run-up. So that's why sometimes these stocks, they have to cool down, sell off, come back down to earth, go into a little maybe downward consolidating zone, and then it could break out and take the next leg higher. But looking pretty good, Berna. I, I cannot lie. In my opinion, I, I do like it. Uh, I do like to see, again, the sales increasing, good preliminary results coming in above these expect, well above these expectations. And uh, of course, they were saying, though, a potential loss of eight cents a share. As you see, estimates were a loss of five cents a share. So this is why I'm saying right now, it seems the profitability side has to get in order. However, the revenue side 
and the uh, the advertising, the word of mouth, looks like all of that is growing very, very well. So chances are, over time, this stock, in my opinion, is probably going to be a grower and, and could be viewed as a buyer even here at about this 11 and three quarter level. But in my opinion, again, I, I would just personally look for a little bit of a cheaper price. But if this is one you were watching and now, you know, it's been running, you saw it at eight and now it's up here at 11. I can appreciate the fact if you feel like you missed out. So you want to slowly begin to piece your way in. Again, in my opinion, I said, even if someone bought recently at 10, 11, I wouldn't necessarily call them crazy, but I'm just showing you a couple of technicals that could be indicating that a sell-off could happen. But like we always say, if we bought it just now today at 1170, if we pull back to 1050 and we have a little cash on hand, we can always add to the position. If we happen to test this support and then we break back down to 790, yes, again, it's going to suck in the short term, but like we always say, if we loved it at 1170, uh, if we liked it at 1170, we should love it at 790. So that's why, again, a situation like this, you're, you're forecasting growth, sales are coming in, you know, preliminary revenue results. You got celebrities helping with advertisements now. So if we're talking about bigger and better things and growth down the road, then that's why I always say if a stock pulls back, in my opinion, you should not view that as a negative. You should not get upset or emotional. You should view that as an opportunity to buy a stock that you liked here at 11 that now you can buy more of down here at 8 or 6, whatever. But again, I think here, well, on the weekly again, got to watch that 200-day moving average. Here, there's a one-year chart, by the way. One-year chart, bottom fib, 1052. And then again, if we potentially come back here, you can see it looks like it's right sub $10. <clears throat> so we do have a little bit of wiggle room here that we could pull back on, but I just wanted to show a couple of technicals and a couple of uh, potential uh, pivot points to watch here moving forward. But yeah, earnings coming up in about a month and technically coming in above those revenue numbers. So Berna, B-Y-R-N, in my opinion, definitely one to watch. And if it does sell off and, and start to chunk down and have a big dip, if markets stay red, in my opinion, based on what we're seeing here with the growth in, the, in these sales and these website visits, uh, in, in my opinion, I would be a buyer. And I'm going to end it there. So once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comments section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel. That is our handshake agreement. That's all I ask. That is how you help me help you. But more importantly, moving forward, like I always say, I understand that markets are rocky and volatile and uncertain. So I want to wish everyone success. Hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. You guys have a great weekend.